So, so the best way to do this is to take the head and the front legs, not the front joint here. Here, you get a little closer to me. Tied up pretty close. You don't want it dragging on the ground. You want him to be able to reach down and grab it. And I just tied in a bow knot and tie the running end through there. It'll be fine because it's going to cinch down. That way he can grab it with his hand. And either your right hand or left hand, you'll want to do that. And then that way you keep him up. You can just kind of hold it like that so he's up off the ground. Okay. So let me get my jacket and then uh, we'll see how, how well Logan does it. Go to the truck, man. You gotta love the hills. How's that feel, Big Daddy? <laughs> Other side, but you gotta put it on the inside. Reverse it. There you go, go from the inside. There you go. You got it. Okay, so we got him up here uh, hanging the winch now. We'll clean this meat off and get down here. So the first thing we're going to do is skin the deer. So we start at the top end. We're just going to take this hide out to here. We'll take the hide off there here. We'll do the rear end and the tail end, and then we'll just pull him like a sleeve out of out of that skin. So when they've just been killed, when they're fresh like this, and they haven't been in the cooler, they're really easy to to skin but when uh, when you've had them you know hanging which we prefer to do but Thanksgiving's coming so we need to get them skinned um, when he we usually leave them about three to four days hanging and then we'll take the meat off and we'll put it on ice and let that blood come out for another um, three or four days you can go some people go five um, the meat will be fine you should keep it cool we keep ice on it just let that blood come out of it out of the meat. So all we're doing here is just cutting it around the top up here. Walk out of the back. Start pulling it around to this side. Just you can see where that skin attaches. You pull it down, pull it down. We don't want to poke the meat and cut it if we can help it. Happens sometimes, but try to avoid it. Getting back here to his Achilles, we want to go outside of that. Once we cut that Achilles, that that foot's going to swing on us, and he won't doesn't want to hold up that height. So we got him loose here. Now we'll just pull the skin out and cut that sinew there. There we go. That little 
membrane holds that skin. Just get it coming on the back, try not to cut the meat. Like I said earlier, there uh, I can't say enough about a good sharp knife. That's uh, that's the key. So if you uh, if you do anything to invest, invest in how to sharpen a knife. <laughs> Pick that skill up. Now what I want to do is pull this one on down. So I got enough here. Dry hair will help you. When this gets slick, it's kind of a pain. So get a hold of dry hair and you can pull it right down. Let's go to this other side. Again, we want to just get right up under that skin with a knife. Keep it away from the meat. Run right up that leg. Logan's got the important job of keeping him from swinging too much on me. When he's not on the ground, they'll swing real bad and he'll constantly fight and try and pull and get that hide to come loose. tail swinging around this one. So now to the tail, and as you remember, I didn't take the rectum out in the wood, so that's what I'm going to do now. There's obviously just a hole there, so I'm just going to cut around his rear end there. And then what I want to do, there's usually a lot of fat in there, and it'll make a knife. Oh man, there it is. I'm going all the way around it. It's hard to see, I'm getting in the way, but it's hard to get to. Push the knife down in there, all the way around. Again, sharper the knife, easier. Go that way. Now that's there, and all it's holding here is the tail. So. Got that bone done again. Skip through the tail and pull him on down. Now we can start taking him up a little bit higher. And when we start pulling this skin off, it'll come off good except on these sides. On these sides, it's going to start wanting to take meat with it, especially this, this membrane or layer right up in here along the ribs and the flanks. For some reason, that always wants to come down with it. So. See, I've got meat attached to the skin right there. It's just a layer. That's okay. You know, it's not like you're going to eat that or anything. But uh, use your knife as you go and just pull it, cut it loose. You can see that piece there. You don't want to cut that back strap, whatever we do. Just take care of that. So. Again, when we can get a hold of good dry hide here, we can pull it right out. Now that looked easy. When they're cold, it ain't that easy. I promise. It's a load. Keep swinging him. Let's bring him all around here. Whoa. So here's where that hide wanted to come through, or that piece of meat, because that's where the bullet went out. It's the exit wound. 
So for us, we don't do neck meat. Uh, some people do. If you do neck meat, you just take this right on down all the way over his head. We'll keep the shoulders. At the uh, at the Tennessee Classic, we uh, we cook about 28 to 30 shoulders for the big potluck we do on Saturday night. So we'll donate those to the club. And those will be eaten by about 500 folks that come the first weekend of May. Here's our Tennessee Classic, big shoot, potluck, music, bluegrass, country music, you name it. It's just an incredible traditional weekend, making suppos, flint napping, um, great, great gathering. Essentially. So I'm going to split this hide at the elbow, cut it in two, and now I'm going to take it down this leg. So just like I did off the hind quarters, I, I'm at the elbow right there. Now I'm, I'm just going to take my knife and go down the leg, watch your hand load, um, doing the same thing. We're just trying to separate it out. We're going to take it about to right where that knee turns into mostly sinew. And um, on the inside, we'll cut that down the same way. And then we'll cut the hide off around that leg again. We'll hold it up there. I can see that muscle. It's going to be on the outside of that muscle right there. And then once we get it loose like that, we'll just bring it back. These shoulders, we smoke them until the meat's just falling off the bone. Um, they're hard to cook and then debone. Get on that side and hold that one up. They're hard to cook and debone. They're better to put in the oven or smoker or something and just cook them until, cook them until the meat is right there. Yeah, hold on. Just push this one back. No, yeah, there you go. We got some neck meat coming in there. Pull that down a little more. There we go. So we'll go to this one. Grab that leg. We'll go to the elbow on it. And again, we're going to just go down the leg. Now there are all kind of ways you can go on YouTube, and a lot of people use the tennis ball to do it. Um, uh, you can you can take a tennis ball back and pull it down and just run right down and with it. Uh, my buddy Michael White does it that way. That works. Uh, I just want to show you just a simple traditional way of getting through this without any difficulty. It ain't that difficult. It's, I guess it. It's just a matter of doing it and trying not to whack them up. So if you uh, if you search for if you search for uh, tennis ball deer skinning on YouTube, you'll see a video and see a guy do it. I've seen it done several times. I just I've always done it this way. Never had a problem doing it this way. So that's why I do it. <laughs> All right, so we're down to the neck now. So we're going to, we're going to saw these front feet off now, or the front legs. So we'll just go right here. Where we... 
this one. So now the interesting thing about this, hold on there, um, is that there's no, of course, it's a ball and socket. There's no bones holding the shoulder on. So if you start cutting here, keep them pulled back. You'll open him up. And you'll see you just go right up around this. You got a shoulder blade right there. Go right around the shoulder blade. That's just flesh. And you'll see this thing. This whole shoulder will just start coming out. There's nothing holding it in there. All right? Just right down there. No bone at all. And your shoulder comes right off. I mean, it'll just pop right off. Okay. So we'll go to the other one. Same thing. Uh, let me get on this side, hold his head so he stays straight and I can keep him open, just anything. So we want to go right in the armpit, cut that little flank open right there, and then we'll find that shoulder blade, follow the shoulder blade to the top, and then all we're going to do is follow that shoulder right down through there. That's it, got a big clean shoulder there. Next thing we're going to do is the back strap. Let's lower him a little bit. We're just going to look at where this hip comes in and the backbone starts here. And we're going to we're going to cut into the back the backbone or the back uh, strap and cut right to the spine right there. And then we're going to follow the spine down to where it would insert at the shoulder blade here. So now I'm just going to take my knife and let that spine follow. There's a, a thick piece of sinew that follows that back strap all the way down and so hopefully you can see that I'm just following my knife I feel the the backbone on the left side of my blade I'm just following that down all the way down okay then I'm gonna come here and and I'm just gonna start easing in get it right on that rib that very back rib like that and once I get it started then I'm gonna go to the end of that back strap and come into the ribs going down through here. Now it's a small deer, so it's going to be a, a, a smaller one. But you want to cut it right away, and you'll see once it starts coming, it'll it'll come out of there really easy. This isn't. Oh, what a piece of meat this is! This is one of the finest cuts on a deer. If they're a fairly big deer, the ten one is great as well. We'll get to that in a minute. But it's tiny. These back straps. Oh boy. Hmm. We're just going rib to rib, and it'll come, it'll just fall right out, really. You're going to have a piece of meat on this outside, you'll see, that's coming off. And it's really a piece of uh, flesh that goes over the, uh, the ribs on the outside be a flank steak I guess if you were doing a cow but of course a deer is small we're just going to separate it and the end of it is nothing but sinew and if you were using that you can make rawhide out of it and you can do a lot of that sinew the, the Indians would use the sinew off of the leg that Achilles down there and then they would use those pieces along the back strap and you can see right there is where I separated it that's great uh, to, to do things with. You can make all kinds of things out of that. But there's that back strap on one side. Nice, clean, beautiful piece of meat. Put that over here. We'll go to the other side. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start at the same point. Just go in, cut to the edge of the ribs, and then start down that back bone. Stay as close to it as possible. Don't get in a hurry. Cut it as clean away as you can. Take it all the way down. Come back out here, cut to there, get it started down through here. You can see it gets a little narrower right there when those ribs come in. So then we're going to start separating it from that first rib up top. Once it starts peeling off, it's pretty easy to straighten right there. Sometimes after they've been cooled for a while, it'll just start crawling. When you start doing this, it'll start peeling away on its own. You don't even have to do much cutting at all.
here's the other back strap. So now, quarters here. So you cut these off however you want. I don't make a lot of steaks. Uh, we'll do stew beef, we'll do roast, and then we'll do burger uh, out of these in my family. So, um, you know, there's a lot of folks bring these out differently based on the cuts of meat they're going to do. Uh, I don't uh, worry too much about it. I'm going to cut through it and you'll see that. So now you saw that leg go over because I just cut the the uh, Achilles tendon there. So I'm going to get to this elbow here. And I'm going to follow, what I'm going to do is follow that bone all the way in and cut this meat off right along that bone. Follow that bone down on both sides. And once I get get it coming off the bone, I'll be able to separate it out. So I'm just looking at it, trying to figure out exactly where the bone is and step right on it. it up underneath here right along the bone yes I'm gonna follow up this hip bone it's gonna go back in right there Just like that. got a bone in it comes right in there so there it is get around that What I want to do is get this loose enough around this bone that I can fold it over. Because once I can fold it over, it's just going to fall right off. So I'm going to go to the back side now and cut it down to the bone on this side. That way, bam, falls right over. Now I'm going to go back to my, to my bone and follow the meat right along that bone. There is your entire one side hind quarter cut off. Go to the other side. Same thing, I got this big elbow up here. I'm going to start on that. I'm going to come in. Got the bone right there. So now for me, I want to take it. This one, I'm just going the opposite direction first. I went the other way, the other way on the last one first. Doesn't really matter. So we got in there now. So I'm gonna come up here, catch it on this side. Right around that rear end there. Back to the back end. That's tough. There's a big piece of right there. Okay, so now we're going to get it turning. So we're going to come up.
brings that back to that uh, hind quarter. So there's your pile of meat. And uh, now, there's this meat. It's got a lot of gristle, a lot of sinew. That's a calf muscle. Uh, there's some flank meat here. And the bigger the deer, the bigger that'll be. And there's neck meat. A lot of people clear all that out, clean all that up. If you want to do that, that's great. Especially on a bigger deer, that's bigger meat. So there's a lot more to do there. You can grind it up if you're making burger. Uh, that's, that's a lot of extra meat. I've gotten to where over the years, I, I kill a lot of deer. We eat deer all day, year long. Um, I like really good, lean, clean meat. And then when I package this, I cut all the sinew, all the fat. I mean, really clean it up where it's nothing but really good, lean, healthy meat. And that's all we use. You know, so. Once you see the, the tenderloin, depending on the size of the deer, will be uh, larger or not. Um, but it is an incredible uh, lean cut of meat. That's it right there. So you can see, you know, on a cow, it's going to be really big, of course. So, um, but not on a, a little deer. That's it right there. Um, there's a little sleeve or membrane. Uh, the bigger the deer, the bigger it is. It goes over it right there. So you got to kind of cut that out. You can probably really begin to get an appreciation for the importance of a good sharp knife when you're uh, skinning. I know I've said that several times, but you know you really need to figure out how to keep your knife uh, good and sharp, and it'll go make this process a lot better for you. So, and then we just want to get it coming out right there and then stick right against the back. It comes out pretty easy. It's not much to it. So, just get that guy going. And then it hugs right to the side. You got to watch when you're field dressing. Your kidneys are right up against it. And so, um, when you're cutting them out, if you're not careful, you can cut it. Now what we do with this tenderloin is we're going to, we'll soak it in the refrigerator in water. Just put it in water and put it in the refrigerator, completely covered, and uh, soak it for about three days, changing the water a couple, three times a day to get all the blood out of it you can. You can put a little salt on it to help draw that out, but um, just lay that tenderloin in there, uh, let the, the blood come out, keep washing that blood off of it the whole time. And uh, then once you get most of, you got most of the blood out after a few days, slice it up in just little slices and uh, wrap it in a little strip of bacon, about a half a piece of bacon, and put a toothpick through it to hold it, and then grill that. Now don't grill it too long. Most people, the mistake you make with deer meat is they cook it too long. If you cook it too long, it's going to be tough. It won't be if you'll just cook it enough to, you know, medium rare. But uh, for me on the grill with that, I cook it just long enough to cook the bacon. Don't even worry about the deer. As soon as the bacon is done, you're ready to go. So you don't want to eat raw bacon, obviously. But um, get that, get that bacon cooked, and then eat that as hors d'oeuvres for your main course. What do you think about that, Logan? <laughs> is it good? It's good. <laughs> So there's your other one, and then just you want to clean all this fat off of it. Send it good stuff. Good lean piece of meat. All right, we're going to put this in a cooler, and we're going to all we're going to do is put it in a cooler, cover it nice. We're going to let it set about three days, draining the blood every day, and keeping it on ice and letting the blood drain until uh, we can get as much out as possible. Then we'll cut it up and package it.